heard me speak before, but just uh, very briefly. About six years ago, I got involved with an organization called Merdu that was bringing young women from orphanages in Gabar to a home in Etriazin um, because those girls were turning 17 and at the end of, when they're living in an orphanage at the age of 17, the government stops funding them in the orphanages and they're basically expelled from the orphanages and many of them have nowhere to go. Um, that organization focuses and it still exists. Uh, it takes about 10 or 12 girls um, when, when it has room for them. And they usually prepare them for life, married life, some uh, upper education um, and skills training. We realized, our board realized, um, we were part of that board for a while and then we split off and formed a new board and formed Merhuis because we realized that the need was so great in Armenia, we needed to open up another home. And uh, Merdun was very independent and not affiliated with the church. We wanted our girls to get some background, some, some religious background, regardless of which church in Armenia, Etchmiazin was there, and we felt it was important. So over the last couple of years, we've been collaborating with His, His Holiness and with the Western Diocese. And because I'm very active in the Western Diocese, I have a little bit of pull. So I was able to convince the diocese and Vahapar um, after many, many meetings with uh, our board members that how important it was that we collaborate together on this program. As a result, in September of this year, when Vahapar came to consecrate the cathedral, we met with him and we confirmed with him that he was going to um, be our collaborator. And as a result, he gave us a two-story facility that will house up to 50 young people. Oh, wow. And that house has been complete, it's a home, it has been completely renovated by a benefactor from New Jersey who wanted to open an orphanage. Our home is not going to be an orphanage. Our home is going to be a home. Our home is going to bring young women, and we've recently decided with Vapar that we wanted to start with 13, 14 year old girls, 12, 13, 14, young teenagers, because we realized when they came at 17 or 18 years old, they're already in the bad habits. And as you're going to hear from Ara, human trafficking, prostitution, alcoholism, and domestic violence are huge in Armenia, and the young women are the most uh, susceptible victims because they have no hope. They have nowhere to go. They come from families that are so poor, those families cannot afford to take care of them. They cannot afford to train them in order to have them have self-esteem and be independent so that when they marry, they don't go into the same cycle that their families are in, which the money that comes to many of these families is buys alcohol. And the husbands and the fathers and sometimes the mothers drink and then the children are beat up. It's, it's a cycle. So our vision and our mission plan is to bring girls from, uh, from outlying areas and from areas that are actually right in the outskirts of Yerevan, bring them into our home, and they will live there. They will be taught how to take care of themselves. They will be learn to become independent thinkers. We, um, we want them to understand that this is not a handout. We want them to understand that they are not entitled. We want them to understand that this is a gift, and they're being given the gift of hope, and they have to earn it. And when they turn 17, they will go to school, government-funded schools, and when they turn 17, we will keep them there, and then we will do the second phase, which will be to send them to either a upper division secondary education college if they want to. Many of the young women over there go to school to become teachers. We will, some, a couple of the girls from Meridun have, are, are lawyers. So we want to give them that opportunity and, and um, deal with them in that level. And then, you know, they're probably going to eventually get married, but hopefully they will have this, the personal tools in order to realize that when somebody from Dubai, somebody from Russia, somebody from Turkey, somebody from Saudi Arabia come there and say, we have a better job for you in our country, they won't need to go there because that's what's happening now. And you know what kind of job they're being offered over there. So that's our mission. The home is, the reason I speak in the future is because we have taken our time not to open the program until we have all the pieces in play. And I'm so excited that just as of a month ago, 
we were able to get those last pieces together. A director has been hired. He's ordered furniture for 50 kids. Um, he's working on hiring a staff. He's prepared a budget for us. All of the money that we are raising here in the United States, we are the funding organization now. It will all be administrated, it will all be administered through the Mother Church. VAHAPAR will supervise the program. We don't have to worry, are you doing what you're supposed to be? You know, are you spending the money right? We're sending it to VAPAR with the understanding that our money will fund that program and he will oversee them. This is the safest way, because when you send it directly to NGOs in Armenia, you don't know where your money goes. And, and we did have some concerns about that when we were involved with Merdun. So um, this is an organization that gives hope to young women. Eventually, we are going to add a program for men. Right now, the young men at 18, they go into the army, they're taught how to shoot guns, they don't learn skills, they get out at 20, and then who knows what they do. So eventually, once we get the girls in, the program running, we, we have a mission statement for the young men, and we want to do outreach to the young men so they can come to our facility, and they can um, get the kind of skills training they need, but they won't be sleeping there, for obvious reasons. We're going to The residential part will be the women. Um, we do have a website. I provided you with bookmarks. If you have more questions, my phone number is on there. The other phone number, that board member is no longer on our board, so you can call me or go to our website. We have a very detailed website. You can check in with us. Um, Maggie mentioned the Club 100. Our founder of Club 100 is sitting in the back here, Harriet Phillips. It's a fantastic way to um, raise money, and we've raised close to $20,000 just with Club 100. You pay $100, we do something special for our Club 100 members. This year we had a big concert at St. Peter last month. We raised $30,000 at that concert and our Club 100 members were our guests. And what's happening is people are hosting little events, taking six women out to dinner, um, taking them to lunch, asking each one to donate 100, that person hosts it, we've made money. This, just real briefly, and then I'll end. Saturday, or Friday, I spoke to the diocesan assembly of the Western Diocese. And we were talking about Club 100, and I'm looking out in this sea of men, because it was mostly men there. And this isn't just about women supporting this. This could be your daughters, all right? So I looked at the men, and I said, listen, you guys golf. Go out, get a group of people to play golf. Pay $150 as your golf entrance fees. Have your host, or pay, pay 100, have, your, have somebody host the entrance fees. And those $100 come to Maragoy's and you have a good day of golf and have a beer afterwards. Or play, go play, get a poker group together. Put in $150, the first 50 goes to the, you know, the, the pot, the other $100 comes to Maragoy's, you got six guys playing golf, playing poker, there's $600 right there. In Cleveland, a group of women got together in a, blizzard in February, blizzard, one of those blizzards you heard about on the news, 27 women came and we raised $2,700. I joined them by Skype. I sat in my computer and talked to these women and explained what this program was about. So there are ways you can support this without having to give us thousands of dollars, but we won't turn it away if you find a resource that can give us that money. We have to pay for the operations of the program. So that's our function for the rest of at least the next five years. This is going to give a young woman in your homeland <coughs> hope. And so we hope you will spread the word, we hope you will participate, we hope you will contact us, and we hope that you will give hope to someone else. Thank you.